What's the risk? Hosted by myself, Daniel Crow, and Peter Mansell, the founder of Mansell Financial Group, a financial advice business he founded in 1980. This is a simple video series we hope investors can use to better understand index and portfolio performance, along with addressing some investment questions and dilemmas. And this episode is on a bit of a dilemma. Uh, your investment philosophy, so it's a book we wrote, shameless plug, available at Amazon. Disclaimer, please pause and read. Suffice to say, our intent is educational and not rendering financial advice. Um, don't make a step to sign. There's simple concepts we'd like investors to better understand performance in the short and long term and how to think about some various dilemmas. What we have is someone who's taken a look at his mother's portfolio, we'll call her Beryl, and he's found a problem. I couldn't resist taking a look at my mother-in-law's advised portfolio. As I know about VAS, VGS and low-cost ETFs, what I saw shocked me. Not a lot of strange hedged and unhedged funds with small allocations too many, I personally think, but the fees on some of them were 1% higher than you'd see on some well-known ETFs. Now, he's got a concern, but his mother-in-law doesn't care. My wife just checks everything, and if it looks okay, she's happy with leaving it with the advisor. I think I could lower the fees for the same result. What do I do? First, we'll just look at the maths of it. Mother-in-law is 78. I'm just assume you get life expectancy, 85. So we're giving her a $1 million portfolio with 1.2 investment fee versus a 0.3% investment fee. We've assumed a 7.31 per annum return, which is what a 50-50 portfolio has achieved over the last 30 years. And she's going to draw a 5% lump sum. So you can see the impact of fees. And this is why you always say fees matter, don't you, Peter? Absolutely. Every investor should be aware of the costs that they pay, whether it be investment management fees, whether it be administration fees, or indeed advice fees. It's absolutely essential that investors know what they're paying and make sure that they're not paying too much for what they're getting. A fairly substantial difference there after seven years. The son-in-law is thinking, well, we could keep this in um, his mother-in-law's pocket, but... And look, that's a noble uh, approach that the son-in-law might want to take, you know, to be protective of his mother-in-law's finances is definitely a noble endeavour. Um, but there's a fair bit of responsibility is going to go with that. Yeah, I mean, every, it's absolutely understandable that you'd want to do something about this. The next question is, is it really a maths question? And as Peter said, fees absolutely matter. We're not saying fee, the fees, well, one if you're paying 1.2% on funds, um, that's pretty outrageous, isn't it, Peter? Yeah, look, uh, uh, paying a fee of 1.2% per annum, that is absolutely a legacy of the past. That's the average fee that clients may have been paying 20 years ago. Uh, today, it should be, you know, under 0.5%. In our client portfolios, it's probably more like between 0.3 and 0.4, um, depending on the specific portfolio. But cost them or do matter. Um, and 1.2% is a lot, um, but it's important to remember whilst, yes, you can reduce the cost, you better do so while maintaining all the other correct behaviours for a successful portfolio into the future. Yeah, so if you're at 1.2, you probably loaded up the portfolio with, uh, there's a lot of active guru type things in there. Absolutely. And and we know that active management, you know, has historically has had a very checkered record and I'm probably being a little generous to describe it like that. Uh, but at the end of the day, investors should aim to reduce those costs where they can. Just make sure that they understand what they're getting into. So I guess the question here is, in this specific case, is the portfolio doing its job, just covering the spending needs of the mother-in-law after cost? So it's, it's a yes or no. And this is very different if you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s. You definitely should be looking to lower your fees and get the right asset allocation. If no, the decision, so you've got two choices, you'd find a new advisor or DIY. And this is the question of what's the risk? What is the risk of you taking over a family member's portfolio? Your answer, Peter, you're an advisor, we've got advisors here. The advisor shoulders the responsibility to answer for the portfolio, isn't that right? Absolutely. And, you know, if a, if a family member is going to take over looking after a mother-in-law's portfolio, they've effectively just become the advisor. You know, they'll bear the responsibility 
for when things go well, but they'll also bear it when things go wrong. And eventually, irrespective of what date you start measuring a portfolio from, there will be periods of time where all portfolios perform poorly. Do you want to be the person answering the questions at those at those particular times? Will you be able to invoke the discipline on yourself, but also encourage the family member to retain that discipline? Uh, as an advisor, I think over more than four decades, I can say the most important thing we do for people is stopping them from harming themselves. And if we do that, we provide them with an exceptional service. Yeah, so the first thing you've really got to imagine is what happens. And as we've seen in, in previous shows, the market can go down very quickly. And if it goes down 20% in the next three months, you have to explain to your mother-in-law and your wife, I only understand one thing, that you've made changes. So you're essentially in the doghouse now. And look, sometimes the, the phone might ring here and people are a bit nervous about markets and things like that. And the advisor has to talk people through it. Now, that's the job that's going to fall to the son-in-law. That sort of outcome could soon fracture family relationships. And that could be more costly in the long run for the family than what the fees might have been that the son-in-law's managed to save. You've altered something that in their mind, they've the person has noted that the mother-in-law is fine with it. The wife doesn't doesn't necessarily care. She's happy as long as everything looks like it's working fine. So it might be an it might be an old cliche, but uh, I've heard many times said, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. <laughs> it's akin to helping someone with their computer, someone with not a lot of knowledge, and you go around to their house and you fix something. Three months down the track, you get a phone call, and something else has gone wrong in the meantime, and you haven't touched the thing. Um, for three months, but the only thing that they remember is that thing that you did. I could relate this story, given that we're talking about in-laws, to a sister-in-law. I won't name her, but uh, she had an issue with a computer, got uh, a tech guy in to remedy that, fix that issue, and then that, that person travelled back to their home base a couple of hundred kilometres away, and sure enough, the next week, there was another issue, and the only person that my sister-in-law wanted to point the finger at was the tech guy that had been the week before. <laughs> so we'll get to the sources and descriptions of data again, just to highlight that 50-50 uh, that portfolio that we use and the, the calculations, a very simple calculation that was used. Absolutely. Yeah. You can definitely save fees. And if you have the confidence, you can thoroughly explain your reasoning and counsel and educate your family member through every up and down. Otherwise, what's your own peace of mind worth? So if you're going to take over the portfolio of an elderly person, uh, you are going to be answerable for all the changes and anything that happens. And you need to be able to explain to them very clearly. And they need to be able to understand things because this is one of the things that advisors do. Advisors talk with people all the time and they have to answer these questions. And that's something that's going to fall to you if you're going to be the advisor. If you're going to do this work on behalf of a loved one or a family member, be prepared to be the person you know that has to undergo the inquisition when inevitably times get tough. They will at some point. All right. So thanks for joining us on this episode and we'll see you again soon. All right, good shake.